Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now, amongst planet Earth's international sports fans, None are more devoted and fanatical to their national team than those found in Latin America. These are people that have literally gone to war with each other over their football games. So it comes as no surprise that in international motorsports, the fans from Argentina are particularly outspoken and supportive of their racers. They have good reason. Argentina has a long and proud auto racing heritage, and some of the world's best and most famous drivers came from there. Yet, that fervent Argentine auto racing love felt throughout the nation all began with just one man, Horatio Anasagasti. Born in Buenos Aires in 1879, his family was quite wealthy, owning many plantations across Argentina. Horatio was from an early age introduced to the elite of Argentine society and was expected to go into conservative politics as was appropriate for his family position. But it would not be so. Young Anastagasi was both a brilliant engineer and serious speed demon, and both passions would find their purpose in the automobile. As a young man, he saw the first cars being imported into Argentina from Europe and elsewhere in the 1890s, and cars absolutely fascinated him. He went to school at the University of Buenos Aires, where he graduated with honors in 1902 with his engineering degree, as opposed to a business or political science one. Being essentially an Argentine nobleman, he was expected to support the family business and the conservative government. Argentina had an agrarian economy at the time and exporting foodstuffs across the globe while importing manufactured goods. There just wasn't much industrial development in the country at the time and thus not a huge need for a brilliant engineer. Horatio would change that. By this time, quite a few cars had been imported into Argentina and living in the society circles he was accustomed to, he had driven a few of them and was completely hooked. He absolutely believed that his country could someday make cars, and he would be the man to make it happen. However, he needed to learn how to make that happen. He was an engineer, after all, so he went to Europe to study the automotive industry, eventually ending up in Milan and the factory of Isota Frascini. He spent the good part of 1907 at IAF, not only learning their manufacturing techniques, but also how to drive a car and how to race one. Yes, Horatio wanted to race, and more importantly, he wanted to race for his nation. However, there was a problem. There were no car makers in Argentina. So in true William Johnson fashion, he returned home to Buenos Aires, where he would create Argentina's automotive industry. He partnered up with a few friends to create a garage and a car dealership in town, selling isotas as well as some French makes like Gobran Brilli. This went on for a few years while Horatio also raced in various events both on the continent and locally, most of the local races sponsored by himself or his friends. Yet in late 1909 he founded a new company, curiously named Anastagasti, in partnership with a Signor Velardi, and not long after a new facility in Buenos Aires, which would become the nation's first car factory. He built a few prototype cars at first, using French Bayo four-cylinder engines of 12 or 15 horsepower and tried them out at some local rallies. There were teething troubles and Horatio made some engineering adjustments to the car. At the same time, he strove to bring as much of the production as possible in-house. Engines, transmissions, frames, tires, you name it. He wanted it all to be built in his homeland. Some parts, like spark plugs and such, he was okay importing, but the really important stuff had to be made in Buenos Aires. Though with some complaints from the neighbors who did not expect a car factory to sprout up in the center of town. True production began in 1912. The engine was French in design, Bayo at first, but changing to a T-head engine later that year, while the rest of the car was all on them. 
The cars were offered for general sale while Horatio took them to Europe to race in order to entice sales. He drove one in the 1912 Paris to Madrid race, finishing the race and then giving the car to King Alfonso XIII. He raced his cars throughout the season, placing and even class winning several across the continent. The French press spoke of his exploits, referring to him as his car as the elegant and mysterious South American Anastagasis. He returned from Europe quite the hero. The world of auto racing now knew that Argentina was a contender. Horatio built only about 50 cars before the factory ceased production in 1914 due to complications of World War I. But these were serious cars, and with a serious racing reputation. And ever since, Argentina has had a secret passion. Well, not so secret passion for auto racing. And it all began with their first heroic race driver, car maker, and automotive visionary, Horatio Anasagasti. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.